Hey guys, David at Twice Diecast, and I have bought something you're going to enjoy. This is a big box to give you a little bit of perspective. Here is a Hot Wheels mainline. This box is full of premium diecast in 164 scale. I don't know if you guys have seen this Japanese, legendary Japanese car collection, but this vendor, Star Hill Japan on eBay, was an amazing vendor to work with. You can see by the feedback that he's gotten and he's gotten a lot of orders in the past he is a solid vendor could not recommend him any more than i uh than i am here is how the box that i ordered from him was packaged i want you to please note the extra detail and putting bubble wrap in between each casting you'll see that here shortly but about the the series this is a 164 scale series of classic Japanese cars. And if you guys know my collection at all, you know this really ticks a lot of boxes. I look for stuff that is kind of obscure and cars that I don't know about, didn't grow up with. We're going to look at lots of those today, plus a lot of legendary Japanese cars. Uh, hence the name of the series, that we've all heard of and we've seen in diecasts. Here is what the package looks like that they all come in, but that's not it. Uh, they all come in an amazing box with the magazine. You'll see all that a little bit later. In fact, uh, I want to show you that before we start diving into the cars. So we'll do a quick scan and then we're going to crack open one of the boxes. Okay, before I tear into these like it is Christmas morning, I want to show you how these things normally come packaged, I guess, when you buy them new. Uh, let me scoot this back just a bit. I'm going to have to hold this out at arm's length. <clears throat> so, okay, so just to clarify, these are true 164 scale. That is a prerequisite for my collection. If you... Uh, have any questions about what that means, let me know. I won't explain it here. I'm just gonna give you a quick tour of the box. This is called the, I believe it is the Japanese Classics or Legendary Japanese Cars Collection. So this is 38 vehicles. Every bit of this material is in Japanese. You guys may recognize De Agostini they do incredible 143rd scale, very accessible models. I shouldn't say incredible. They're very readily accessible and the price is right for them. These are going to be licensed products. Each one of these come with an amazing box like this with a magazine that has loads of information about the collection, about the series, a little preview of other cars in the series to, I guess, to make you want to buy other ones. We don't have to worry about that today, guys, because for the first time and probably the last time, I bought the whole stinking collection. Look at it, guys. For me and my collection, this is this is kind of my holy grail. I'm not a super treasure hunt guy. I'm not a super rare stuff. I like the obscure stuff we can't get here in the states and this is this is it for me so this little magazine is in the front here's some info about the car here is how it is presented to you when you buy it this is number one of course it's a toyota 2000 gt just like from james bond 
we're going to get all these open and look at them. I just wanted you guys to see the package because due to the shipping um, costs and what they were going to be, I had the vendor break down all the boxes and, you know, ship them as efficiently as possible in those cases. Here's all the boxes that are broken down perfectly. Here's all the magazines that went in them. I'm not keeping them for resale, guys. I'm going to be opening all these tonight. You're going to look at this amazing collection. And that's all I got to say about that. Let's get to it. I'm going to crack number 38 first. This is a Mazda Capella. And I'm going to do this once in terms of showing you guys the complete unwrapping. Just in case there's any surprises in here as I unwrap it. I want you guys to be aware in case you want to look up some of these on eBay. You're not going to find a better vendor than the guy that I worked with. Um, I've shown you his name and info a couple times already. The care he took into packing was just above and beyond. I know it came from Japan to the U.S., but he didn't have to do it as well as he did. So I wanted to give him one last shout out as I'm unboxing this and I'm reminded of that. You get a plastic, excuse me, you get a cardboard sleeve, Japanese car, legendary cars on the sleeve. Pretty standard fare here, acrylic case. You get a plastic plinth with the car name on it, name and year. And then some sort of model number. Before I take these off, uh, let's look at the car. I'm going to do one kind of shot like this for you guys to look. The next few cars, and the rest of them actually, are going to go a lot faster. Uh, we're not going to do this part where we unbox it. Now that is odd to have <laughs> such an enormous steering wheel. I know this is a small car, but that seems a little out of scale. I don't care. Guys, I'm in such a geek mode over here over these um this is i don't know this is going to be a special unboxing today all right mazda capella pretty cool mirrors on the fenders as they were back then i'm just looking for details so that uh, we don't have to talk about them on every car lens headlamps badge on the grill little bit of color for your indicator lights right there and uh, lensed headlamps, tires with tread, a metal base riveted together. Small model collector will love that we have Mazda Capella 1970 made in Bangladesh. Never seen diecast cars made there and you've got the brand of the diecast maker. All right, so we're going to start flying through these. Here's your Mazda Capella. Up next is a 1978 Toyota Celica XX. Really effective on the tail lamps there. Loving all these mirrors on the fenders. Up next looks like a Mazda. Is that a Lucky Luce Rotary Coupe 1969? Look at the cool matte black top on that. <clears throat> Love the red interior. Love that they don't give you all black interior like Kyosho. Mazda on the front tag. What a cool car. I don't know this car. And that's uh, one of the reasons I jumped on this collection. So many of these cars I don't know a thing about. Before we get too far along, I'm, I'm sure some of you guys are going to ask, do they roll? Kind of. <clears throat> Not as good as most brands, but they do roll, the tires do spin. Guys, after looking at three of these, they're right up there with the level of to make a limited vintage. And that's, that is my highest compliment I can pay them. Let's go with a <clears throat> Toyota Celsius. This is a 1989 and really looks like a Toyota. Um, 
My mind just escaped me. Guys, what is this Toyota here in the States? Did we even have this one? Wheels look perfect. It's a two-tone. It's like a deep forest green with a little bit of gray mixed in. And then you've got the gray cladding on the bottom. Defroster lines on the rear glass. Look at the lens tail lamps. Looks like a, a classic Lexus over here. And maybe that's what it is to the, uh, to the American market. Uh, but this is a beauty. 1986 Toyota Supra up next. Really super cool. Check out the Toyota badge on the hood. Right-hand drive, I didn't notice. I would imagine all of these are gonna be right-hand drive. I'll pay more attention in the future. You guys probably saw as I was going through them. Here's your Toyota Supra. It looks right, doesn't it? Nissan, Datsun, whatever you want to call it. Bluebird, 510 up. 1969 is the year. Might be the same vehicle as Mark from Diecast Breakdown and Datsun Man Diecast. Love this one. Check out the white walls. Chrome rims. Detail on the sail plane back here. Lensed tail lamps, even on that small a vehicle. Logos on the trunk as well. Okay, so I am paying attention on this one. This is a right-hand drive. Lensed headlamps, very small. Beautiful, beautiful bluebird. Love it. 1988 Nissan Silvia is our next piece. Pretty big wheels on the tires on the back here. This one comes with a extra plinth from the maker because of a typo on the one that got shipped out originally, apparently. That's what the uh, eBay seller told me. And there are two plinths in there. Love the seafoam green on this with the cladding on the bottom. Love stock Sylvia. How about that, guys? Wouldn't be a legendary Japanese car series without a Skyline, right? Here's your 1989 R34. Lens tail lamps on the back, GTR badge on the uh, deck lid here. Look at the spoiler, color-coded. A lot more detail than you would get on most spoilers. And it is a totally separate piece. Added to the casting, gray interior, right-hand drive, amazing detail on the interior, guys. Can you see that? A lot of chrome detail on the center console and the driver's area. Wow. Multiple colors on the interior, by the way. Look at the back. Package tray is black. Rest of the interior is gray. Dashboard is black. Wheels look right. Brake caliper not moving when I spin the wheels. I'm telling you guys, these are some of the best die cast I've, I've ever seen. Look at this 240Z Fair Lady. Multiple colors on the body. Fender flares and pewter wheels are perfect. Look at the tiny lens headlamp pieces that are absolutely flush with the body lines on the front of the car. Perfectly proportioned badge on the hood. Tiny black interior, right-hand drive, chrome trim around the windows. Even get some detail work on the bottom. Hadn't showed you that on all of them. Amazing. All right, one of the most beautiful cars ever made, right? 1990 Honda NSX. Let's go around on this thing. I love these full body, rear body 
uh, head tail lamps rather. They go across the entire breadth of the body of the, the rear. Look at the ex exhaust painted. I can't tell. I think it's just paint. I don't think there's any kind of cavity in there. Look at the multiple colors on the tail lamps. Honda badge, clear as day. A little bit of interior detail right there for you. I'll wipe these down. Even the door, like the key lock, has its tiniest, you know, touch of chrome. Here's your front on this one. Got all that off, nice and clean. Mm. This was one of the, the ones that uh, got me, in, you know, to pull the trigger on this. This is a new one for me, giving me some Aston Martin vibes. This is an Asuzu 117, 117 Coupe. This would be 1968. Love the wood grain. Uh, steering wheel, right-hand drive again. And the mirrors on the fenders. Perfect metal flake, silver paint. And there's a difference between the silver on the paint and the silver trim around the windows and the chrome bumpers. Fantastic model, guys. Little bitty tail lamps on the back here. Isuzu 117. Plenty more to go, guys. This one's just insane, guys. <clears throat> All right, so we've got... Obviously, a Honda NSX, right? This is a 2017 model. Let's start on the back here. We've got a beautiful black gloss fender. We have got a carbon fiber roof. We have got a see-through engine cover with detail on the engine. Amazing seats on the inside of this guy. Um, can you see the red bucket racing seats? It's hard. There's not a lot of visible access points to the cabin here. Honda badge on the front. Um, lens headlamps. Wheels are perfect. Let's look at these brake calipers. Staying right where they're supposed to. You can see the red caliper back there. The wheels are amazing, guys. This is just... This is next level die cast right here and this is true 164 scale shout out to uh all the guys in bangladesh making these cars right here my goodness mitsubishi starion is up next 1982 look at the little mud flaps on this guy details just everywhere you turn mud flaps on the front and rear Wheels are amazing. Again, all the fenders, look at the the mirrors have reflectivity on them. Logo and all the decos on the car are spot on. That's painted. And the red, you know, that burgundy is, is right for the interior. It wasn't a flashy red back then. Look at the tail lamps on this one. All the different colors. I'm gonna stop here just for a second. I don't want you guys to uh, think that this is anything common for me to spend this. I have a wife who appreciates my passion for this hobby. I just so happen to get a pretty good bonus at work. That's why I'm able to do things like this. Um, normally I am Super cheap, super frugal, but everything came together at the right time for this one. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Hits just keep on coming, guys. 1973 is your year for this skyline. Coming around on the rear, love that detail on the tail lamps. Love the reflective paint on the 
if those were reflectors or indicators, I don't know. Um, back rear body panel looks good. Everything about this one is absolutely dead on. Including the wheels. Love the uh, fender flares on this one again as well. Beautiful. Another one I don't know. Isuzu Bellet. Don't know. Uh, never heard of this car. This is a 1964 model. And check out that cool, what is that, an antenna on the top? White walls, chrome wheels. Awesome little tail lamps on that. Look at the interior detail on the rear bench seat. Love the rolls to make it look like leather. Tiny, tiny car. Now, I'm going to keep all of these out to the side, and we're going to do full reviews on these on upcoming news and reviews on Diecast Media Network, and I'll probably break down the collection into bits and pieces and do a few at a time for more exhaustive stuff, but we'll move on to the next one for now. Let's look at a 1970 Celica 1600 GT. This is one that we have seen other makers do recently. I think Hot Wheels had this version in a premium and a main line. But this is a true-to-scale version. You can really get a, an appreciation for how tiny this car is compared to other vehicles. This is a small car. Check out the vents on the hood. Those are painted. Love the, again, the deco on the door and the fender. Look at that light pop on that paint job, guys. Crazy, perfect, clear coat on these. Look at the metal flake. These are just spectacular. I, I will quit saying that eventually. Maybe. Look how delightfully plain and mundane <laughs> this Mazda Familia uh, era. Let's see. This is 1980. And this is about as humdrum as you get. Looks like a Volkswagen Golf or a Chevy Chevette from back then. And I love it. Headlamps look right on the money. Look at that Mazda badge on the grill. Chrome above the black rubber molding that you got on these death traps from the 1980s. Coming around on the rear. Perfect. Execution on the tricolor tail lamps. You get amber, red, and white. And then some detail work on the lift gate. Look at the defroster lines and the extra piece that all of these windshield wipers are. These are added after the fact. They're not painted on the windshield. Got an Isuzu Gemini FF. Noticed on the box as I was unwrapping it that this one mentions the Isuzu license. And again, I believe, I believe all of these are licensed. And I just really love the fact that a series called Legendary Japanese Cars includes pretty standard vehicles like this. Now, this is the very first imperfection I found on a car yet. In fact, maybe the wipers are gone too. But... There's a little chip on the paint there. This was new when I opened it. I think these might be several years old. I'll try and find out if there's a year on some of the packaging, but we've got an Isuzu FF here. I'm gonna do quick tire repair. Check out those terrible 80s hubcaps. I think we got the tire fixed. Good enough for me. It's just gonna sit on a shelf. Anyway, just another one I've never heard of. Okay, oldest one yet, 1958 Subaru 360. And 360 might be the number of uh, millimeters that this car was in length because it is the smallest car I think I've got in my collection. 
cool little detail on the back grill. Got a nice simulated cloth top. It's got four seats in there. And check out that uh, front. Huh. Pretty cool car. Look how tiny that is, guys. Got a 1970 uh, Mitsubishi Galant GTO. Uh, looking amazing in orange. You know, earlier I put these on the same level as Tamika Limited Vintage, which I consider to be pound for pound the best die cast in 164 scale. Talking about die cast, we're not talking about resin. Here is a Tamika Limited Vintage Gallant. And I just want to do a quick comparison because I did compare the two. The Japanese legendary Japanese car series from De Agostini gives you fender mirrors. Same detail on the wipers and the hood vents. Both have lensed headlamps. Both have chrome grills. I will grant the Tamika has a little bit sharper detail on the grill. Both have pretty accurate wheels. Get my big old finger out of there. Um, the Tamika has some extra color on theirs. Both are pretty good on their window detail, chrome work around it, body. Both of them have the vents on the sailplane. Both of them have the gas cap, although the D'Agostini version has a little bit sharper body line. Here's your rear on these. And I gotta say, D'Agostini has better looking tail lamps to me than just the flat red paint that you get on the Tamika. You get a plain license plate on the Tamika and you get Mitsubishi on this one. It's a tie. Maybe Tamika wins on this one because of the wheel detail and the chrome, but I do like the lensed headlamps and the extra mirrors you get. So, now remember, with Tamika though, you're going to get pretty much all black interior. You get a lot more detail on the interior with these, including leather, deep brown leather seats and center console uh, detail. So if this one's a tie, I'm going to give it to D'Agostini because that's who we're looking at today. Got a Toyota Sports 800. Another tiny one. Still get the mirrors on the fenders. Um, got some interesting little lights here on the hood. Boy, this thing is just microscopic, guys. Um, let's see if you get lens tail lamps on these. No, looks like you get paint, which, I mean, that is as big as a piece of rice. So, understandable. You get a pass on this one. I love the extra paint you get on the hinges for the trunk. Another super, super tiny car. Still get tread on the tires, though. Okay, we got our first convertible. This is a Datsun Fairlady 1500 from 1962. Really great lensed headlamps. Grill with a little bit of definition there. Uh, got a wood grain steering wheel. Check out that interior. And again, check out that side seat. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, three seater on this car. Uh, here is your rear. Really cool car. Mazda Cosmo from 1975 is up next. Multiple colors on the interior. We've got a burgundy dash and a lighter color 
bucket seats for your interior. Red looks good. One thing I noticed in Small Model Collector is pretty good about uh, bringing this to all of our attention. These tires look inflated. They're rounded. They're not square tires. And I've seen that on multiple cars. Uh, we've got some nice trim around the fenders. Got painted metallic, uh, either paint or metallic stickers for the tail lamps on this. Kind of works. And very small area to get that turn signal in. Uh, don't mind that at all on this one. Check out that grill. Don't know this car at all. Really glad to get to know it. Mazda Cosmo. Back to cars that we do know. I think any diecast collector nowadays has seen an R32 Skyline from whatever brand you collect. And this is just another example of one. But this one is one of the better ones I've ever seen as expected from this collection. The detail on the lamps is what's getting me, guys. The way they're made, it looks like there is a bulb back there. It looks like the grill has depth. And you don't get plain white license plates. Check out the badging. It's all the correct proportion. All of them are right-hand drive again. And again, just detail on the wheels that you don't get from other makers. Here's the uh, very recognizable rear end. Proud to put this new Skyline in my collection. 2007 is the year on this Nissan GTR. Look at the extra detail you get on the wing, guys. I mean, that looks exactly the way those wings were designed and mounted. The tail lamps are just perfection with the inset indicator light and brake light. All the badging on the car is perfect. Wheels are perfect. Headlamps, I think you know what I'm going to say about that. Perfect. Best GTR I've got in my collection. Look at it. This is a Nissan SEMA from 1988. You guys see that hood ornament? Unbelievable that they would uh, put that on a vehicle this scale. Not the first diecast maker to do that, but uh, they did it as well. Wheels are amazing on this guy. Big old indicator uh, reflector on the side there. Check out the interior. Just loads of detail in there. Here's your tail lamps on this one. 1988, if I didn't say it. Before now, looking like a mid to late 80s sedan for sure. Oh, got some paint that's come off, maybe. Or it's on both sides, so I don't, I'm not sure. May not be a, a defect at all. Kind of looks like it. I don't know. Still love it. Nissan SEMA. Got another little one. This is a Honda S800. This would be from 1966. And a little red convertible, just like uh, that fair lady we saw earlier. Here's your interior. Black leather, two-seater, little roadster. Really cool to see that Japanese makers were uh, using the European Roadster influence of the 60s in their vehicles as well. Who doesn't love driving uh, with the top down? Uh, they do in Japan as well. Honda S800. 
I've always struggled on this car's name, the Japanese version. Alcyone? Alcyone? I don't know. It's a Subaru. We know it as the SVX, and this guy came out in 1991. Look at the wraparound rear lamps on it. SVX there in the middle. Look at the multiple colors. You guys know this car came out not too long ago from Matchbox. Everybody loved it. Well, here is a premium version of one. Really recognizable window design on this vehicle. Beautiful paint job. And there's your headlamps. I don't know why, but getting some Saab vibes from the front end of this vehicle. And the wheels look right on the money, too. In case you're just joining us midstream, D'Agostini has put out this amazing legendary Japanese car series in true 164 scale. And we are looking at a Subaru SVX right now from 1991. Not too long ago showed a Hobby Japan Corolla 11. Uh, this is a 1972, definitely older than the one Hoppy Japan had that I showed. Uh, but this is a beauty. Love the color. Almost an army green. Love the dark pewter rims on that. Really complements the green. Here's your tail lamps on that. Colors all over the place on those. And again, the fender mirrors looking great. A little bit of reflection. A little bit of paint on the hood here. Chrome bumper. We've got cars from the 50s up to the early 2000s in this series so far. In fact, 2017 actually. So about 50 years of cars maybe more in this series from D'Agostini. Don't mind admitting, this 1972 Laurel is one of the highlights of the collection for me. When the Hot Wheels uh, pop culture series Laurel came out, I shaved the front bumpers and the wheel flares and fender flares down to look stock because this was the look I was trying to go for. And this thing is beautiful. Love all the chrome, complemented by all the other colors on the front end. The paint job, guys, is, is so much better than they needed to give us. We've got tan seats, red carpet, black dash, silver on the... I mean, there might be four or five colors on the interior of this car along with a immaculate, flawless paint job. Here is your rear of the car, anyway. Absolutely gorgeous. Love the white walls, skinny tires back, you know, exactly what would have been on the car back then. Every one of them have been a hit. Now, this would... To me, this would be an absolutely legendary Japanese car. Here is the 72 Civic. We've seen this in Hot Wheels. We didn't see detail like this from Hot Wheels. But here is kind of the car that helped start the takeover of uh, all the imports in the U.S. And I can barely hold it. It's so small in my hand. Beautiful tail lamps, multiple colors on that. Interiors got a lot of detail, guys. White vinyl seats, probably. And look at that front end. Tell me you don't recognize that. Love the white walls on this one. This is how I would make a custom if I was going to make uh, <laughs> the Honda Civic. A little bit more pizzazz on this one. This is a 91 Mazda RX-7. 
Note the uh, spoiler. Wiper across the rear windshield. Super fine defroster lines on the back. Wheels. Perfect. Mazda RX-7. Two more to go. 1968 is when this Cosmo Sport was made. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know another vehicle with that profile. Do you? Uh, look how the bumper splits the tail lamps. And I can't get over on the ones that have these body line uh, lens covers on the headlamps, how flush they lie. Really tough to pull off on a bigger scale, let alone 164, uh, but they do it. I mean, there is chrome trim painted or on the outside of the plastic lens, really effective. You can see light passing through these wheels too. These are not solid plastic wheels on all of them. This guy might have snuck into my top five of this entire series. Look at the detail work on the interior. Can you see the pattern on the cloth seats? I hope you can, because it is spectacular. Well done on the Cosmo Sport. The last one that we will look at on this video, this 1978 RX-7 Savannah. You can clearly see the light beige interior, complemented by the darker brown carpet throughout the cabin. Seats have a pattern on them, almost like a plaid. You get the fender mirrors, you get black trim all around the glass pieces, black trim all around the body. Wheels are perfect, they look rounded on the tires. Tires have tread, get a metal base. I mean, there's just so many features on these cars that you don't get from other makers. Defroster lines on the glass again. And uh, it's been my pleasure to show these to you. I can't promise that I will ever invest as much into this um, series as I did. But, uh, you know, everything lined up perfectly for me to grab these. And I'm glad I did. And really glad to get to share them with you. I hope you've enjoyed getting to know the legendary Japanese car series from De Agostini. This is David at Twice Diecast. If I can answer any questions about this series, uh, let me know. Drop a comment and uh, share the video if you like it. Anybody else that might like really obscure, not often seen diecast cars, that's what we're here for. Take care, everybody.